Today's going to be a quick video on how to take care of worms. Now, um, there's a company called The Compost Revolution that offer discounts um, to people who live in certain postcodes. So if you are interested in getting yourself a worm farm to have at home, check out The Compost Revolution and see if they've um, the discount applies in your area. I'm gonna quickly show you how to take care of the worms. Um, what the product is that comes out of the worms and some additional treats that they like. So this is one of our worm farms. Um, I'm actually renamed the worm farms. We're going to call them the worm resorts from now on because these worms are very well taken care of. Um, this is a really simple model. You just lift the lid. Um, the ones that you get from the compost revolution are quite smaller, about maybe a third or a quarter of the size of this uh, and require a lot less maintenance. This is what I've got here today. I've got some kitchen scraps. So there's some pumpkin, potato, banana skins. That's the food for the worms. I've got some um, ground coffee that's out of the coffee machine. That'll go in there also. And this is some cardboard that was out of an um, apple box. Um, I'll explain why the cardboard comes into it in a minute. So over to the worm farm. I'm also just slipping on a glove while we're doing this. Now the worms don't like to be touched by bare hands um, and they also don't like light. So as soon as I open the lid, they're probably going to scamper a little bit. Let's have a look. All right. Nice and moist in here. You can see the, um, the water dripping down the lid there. Worms like it to be nice and moist. If they dry out, they die. So their skin needs to be kept moist. Um, this piece of material on the top here is called Hessian. Um, it's just a Hessian bag that I bought from Bunnings. If you have a hessian bag on the top, um, it stays moist and helps to keep um, the moisture within the worm farm. So peel back the hessian. Underneath the hessian, there's a piece of this um, cardboard that I put in last week, but you'll notice if I push on it, it'll break because it's been kept nice and wet. Um, underneath the cardboard, we have the makings of the worm farm. Now, um, when you first start your worm farm, you put a layer of cardboard or something in the bottom, very much like this. Um, and then on top of that, you can put some compost, uh, you can put some mulch out of your garden. We've got the, um, the scraps out of the chicken coop here. This is all out of the, the bottom of the chicken coop. Um, they quite enjoy that. Um, and there's broken up eggshells. They like to climb in and out of the eggshells. So layer the things as you go. Um, also some shredded paper is a good idea for another layer. So it's very much like making compost. Then you need to get yourself some worms. Um, compost Re Revolution sells worms. I think they sell a pack of a thousand worms for $10, I think. Um, throw your worms in there. Make sure that you keep them nice and moist. Throw your veggie scraps in every single day um, and coffee grounds or tea bags or anything that you've got. And this is what the worms will give you. So this worm farm has a apron here at the bottom that we just undo. And inside this apron, I don't know if you can see it in there, all that black stuff in there are the castings from the worms. Now they shed their skins and they make compost. And this is the castings. This is absolute pure gold for your garden. One tablespoon of castings in a pot, a plant in a pot, is enough to fertilize it for almost a whole year. You just put the tablespoon in and you water it in well. Underneath is where the worm juice comes out. So what this is, as you add the water in through the top, the water runs through all the worms, um, all the compost, all the um, food that's breaking down inside the worm farm. And what comes out at the bottom is a water that's really rich in nutrients. So there's been a lot of studies done about worm juice and whether it is actually effective or not. Um, and the conclusion is that it absolutely is. Um, and it's one of the best things you can put on your garden because it's 100% natural. All right, so back up to the top. I'm going to replace that side and uncover the other side. And there they are. So we started off with a thousand worms in this gar in this bed. I'd say that now we've probably got, oh, I don't know, maybe eight, ten thousand worms in this garden. Uh, really easy, just you know, dig around and you'll find them. Lots in there. So I think what I'll do is I'll go ahead and add the food 
um, and then I'll come back and show you what I've right, done. So now it's all done. Now there's one rule with worm farms and that is that where you add your food or your coffee, it will create heat in the pile. So you can't add the food and the coffee all over the bed because if you do, the worms might get too hot. So you only add them to half so that the worms have the choice of going into the warm part or the cooler part, depending on where the food is. Now, um, I've added the food in one row, the coffee in another row, and I've left the other side B so that the worms can go into that side. Once you've added the food and the coffee, you just need to give them a quick water in. That'll encourage the worms to come to this side and let them know that this is where the food is now. If the food on the other side's probably gotten a bit manky by now. Then we're going to replace the piece of cardboard. And I'm also going to add <clears throat> another one. Worms really, really like to have something heavy on top of them. They like to be covered, they like to be protected. So when you wet the cardboard, it actually gives them that bit of protection and also makes them feel really at home, nice and cozy because it's a bit heavy on top. Then we put the hessian back on and make sure that all of the hessian gets thoroughly wetted. Now remember, all of the water that we're putting into the top of the worm farm here is eventually going to come out the bottom into the bucket and that's your worm juice. The worm juice needs to be diluted. It needs to be diluted as the equivalent of one cup of worm juice to one bucket of water before you put it on your plants. Um, if you don't want to do that, the other thing that you can do is you can put it straight on your plants and then make sure that you give it a really good water in after you've added the fertilizer, that the straight worm juice fertilizer. Alright, so that's about it. It's the worm farm done. You can already hear it coming out the bottom here. It's the worm juice coming out the bottom. Excellent. Really easy to take care of. They produce beautiful liquid fertilizer out of the bottom. Wonderful castings that can go on your pots from the apron, which in the worm farm it's just a different layer. Um, and really easy to look after. They're not dirty, they're not smelly, they don't um, attract mice. Um, just be careful what you put in there. No cheese, of course. Um, they don't like citrus, so no oranges, lemons, limes, um, tomato, and they also don't like onion, so no onion in there either. All right, that's the worm update. Hey guys. I wanted to show you what the worm farm looks like at home because I've got a little one, a little setup here um, and it's a little bit different to the school one. So I'll um, show you guys what mine looks like. So this is a little one that I purchased from the compost re uh, revolution um, and it's just a simple setup. It's got three boxes. So you start with one layer and as you build up your, um, your worm farm and your worms multiply, then you add on more layers, but it's really simple. Um, you know, you can feed them once a week or even every couple of weeks if you've got a lot of food in there. Uh, you just lift the lid and I've got my hessian sack in here too. And often I have newspaper and stuff from the chicken coop. You can see they've almost eaten through. That's the newspaper there. And then I just collect, I collect a, um, a container of scraps. I have it on the back of my bench and my kids know to put food scraps in there. And then I just add it in there. My container's just here. I'm just making sure that I'm not putting in um, the onions and the citrus. They really like eggshells. They seem to be a favorite. And the smaller you break your food up, the faster they're going to get through it. But I'm pretty lazy, so I tend to just add it in whole. Things like um, avocado pits and mango seeds will take a really long time to break down. They will get there, but it will take a little bit longer. But the worms kind of like it and they hide out and that sort of thing. So you add your scraps to it. And they're looking nice and stinky and gross. Worms like that. Already starting to break down. Like Jane said, just on half of it. And then often I'll cover a layer of um, 
newspaper. I usually usually get the scraps from the chicken coop and add them to this as well. Um, they like straw and um, light materials because it helps keep it aerated and they can move around really easily with that. Um, if you do notice your coop is getting a little bit smelly or you've got some little vinegar flies hanging around, you need to add more carbon. So just like a compost heap, you need to add some more newspaper or toilet paper rolls, any sort of brown cardboard paper material and that will help stop the smell um, and then it's just a matter of watering them in and the same thing you collect I collect the worm um, juice down here so I just keep um, old containers and you put it underneath turn the tap on and it fills it up and it's really easy and then you will find in this bottom layer here as well you get that um, the worm castings which are fabulous for your garden so I'll often add a handful of um, sort of my worm farm castings to my garden beds as well because worms are good not too many worms but they are good to have worms in your garden beds to help break down things another little tip that I have is I've got this soda water bottle here it could be any um, water bottle but in summertime when it starts to get really hot if you can't move your worm farm to somewhere shady, um, you don't have a good spot for it or in the place that it is it gets hot, you can freeze a bottle of water. Um, I just chuck that in a plastic bag and put it in the freezer and then I add that in the top of my worm, um, my worm farm just to keep them cool because you don't want them to overheat because heat and drying out is definitely the enemy of the worm. But I've had my, um, my worm farm for I reckon at least two years now and um, we haven't lost any since, but on those really sort of, I reckon over 35 degrees, I tend to add a cool water bottle in there for them. But otherwise they're pretty low maintenance and they do fabulous things for your garden. So I'd recommend you get worms as pets.